a good God. with me for just a few moments. I want to share with you the Word of God. I have two scriptural readings I want to read in your hearing. The first passage comes from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 33. Specifically, I would that you would look with me at verse number 6. Jeremiah 33. And I want to look at verse 6, if you will. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. And here's what it says. Behold, I bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. May I ask you to shift, if you will, to the New Living Translation. It says, nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. May I ask you to shift with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. And I'd like to begin reading at verse 4. Romans chapter 12, found in the New Testament. And I'd like for you to zero in right at verse Number four, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Hmm. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honoring, in honor preferring one another, not slowful in business, fervent in prayer, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 
recompense to no man evil for evil, for thine do things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much, if it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If they're thirsty, give them drink. For in so doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on their head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Because Now come on and hit it like you really know it. Come on. Oh, how I love him. How I love How I love him.
remain standing for just a moment. Dwayne, I, I picked a song that I thought everybody knew. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I said I was just going to go back to our Sunday school days. You know, when you were sitting in Sunday school class, everybody had to sing that song. But I can tell by some of you all's expressions, you've never heard the words before. So then I thought, well, you know what? Maybe just out of their own love for God, they would begin to know the words and feel it for themselves. Because y'all ain't nothing like God loving you. Come on, please. Start. I said, ain't nothing like God loving you. I mean, ain't nothing like God loving you. When, you've been, when you have been hurt by so many others and you discover that here's somebody who really loves me, <laughs> hey God come on come on come on is there anybody up in here knows God loves them do you know God loves you I wonder I wonder I wonder can you love him back hey 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 Tell somebody on your road, I love God. Oh, how I love Him. Oh, how I love Him. Oh, how I love Him. <laughs> Go on and be seated if you can. Woo! But oh, how I love Him. Nothing like an old hymn. Let's take you in. <laughs> come on, come on, come on.
to my partner for life. Our first lady, first lady Cynthia Moore. strength constant support thank you to our council of elders to the diaconate ministry to our staff who is overworked and underpaid yet you keep on giving to the leaders of our various ministries to the members of this local body and to all of you who are visiting with us and are friends of this ministry I greet you with grace mercy and peace from God the Father God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, may he be with you all. I'm extremely grateful that by God's grace, he has allowed me to serve as pastor and shepherd of this body called Carolina Missionary Baptist Church for now going on 27 years. Each year it has been my um, practice, Tiffany, it's been my practice, it's been my custom to give an account of my stewardship over the last 12 months to you, those of you who are called members of Carolina Church. I give you that stewardship by way of the State of the Church Address. It is my privilege to stand before you again to do so behind this sacred desk. Sounding the trumpet one more time. I am grateful to serve as the pastor of this ministry. I ask God to let my greater years be before me and not behind me. I want to begin this State of the Church address by using a metaphor, which is why I chose the passages from Jeremiah and um, the book of Romans. I wanted to look at the health of the church as one would assess the health of a human body. Jeremiah 33 verse 6 says, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and I will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 through 21, details for us how to aid the functioning of the body, or in our case, the church. So in my address, I want to use these passages to explore the state 
of Carolina's health. I want to use these passages to explore the state of the health of our church. What is our health spiritually? What is our health financially? What is our health relationally? I'm convinced that as the people of God, we have to have the confidence to assess ourselves spiritually and determine the value and significance of our love, of our callings, of our work towards kingdom building. So if you don't mind, let's begin with a few diagnostic questions that I believe will aid us in assessing the state of our church. Let's, let's, let's start with a few questions. Here's the first question. Now, let me just, in the onset, let me thank the visitors for coming. Thank you for being here. And I pray that something I will say during the course of my presentation to our people will be a blessing to you and your church. And um, your coming will not have been in vain. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's examine a few questions regarding our own church. Here's the first question I want you to lift. What areas do we need to strengthen spiritually? That's the first question. What areas do we need to strengthen spiritually? The second question that I want to pose today is not only what areas do we need to strengthen spiritually, but what areas do we need to strengthen relationally? Relationally. What areas do we need to strengthen relationally? The first question that I pose to you is what areas do we need to strengthen spiritually? Question number two is what areas do we need to strengthen relationally? Petrina, here's question number three. Question number three is what areas do we need to strengthen Financially. Financially. What areas do we need to strengthen financially? That's question number three. Here's question number four. Question number four is this, you all. In what areas are we weak and diseased? In what areas are we weak and diseased? These are some daunting questions. And not only do I think that these are questions that ought to be asked of us collectively, <laughs> but I also believe that these are questions that we ought to ask of ourselves individually. Here's the next question I want to pose to you. What illnesses do we currently have? What illnesses do we currently have? What's making you sick? What is your sickness? Here's the last question that I wrestled with. The last question is, how can we assure long-term spiritual health for the body collectively?
called Carolina Church. How can we assure long-term spiritual health for the body called Carolina Church? I hope these questions are plaguing you like they plagued me. I believe you all that we need to assess ourselves. And so, and so in this state of the church address, I want to I want us to assess ourselves. We just recently had our church conference on yesterday. And in all of our recent reports, Carolina is in a serious but stable condition. We're in a serious but stable condition. Serious but stable condition, which means that our vital signs are normal, although the diagnosis have been life-threatening. I do have some good news for you. The good news is, you all, we're not critical. The, the good news is God still has his hand on the ministry. Um, our chart, however, does indicate that there is a need for improvement. While our vital signs are somewhat in a normal range, we still have some problems. There's a need for further testing so we can detect the symptoms of and prevent threatening diseases. Allow me, if you will, to, to start first, Jamie, spiritually. Spiritually. Spiritually speaking, some of our members continue to pray, continue to fast, continue to seek God's directions and guidance for their lives and for the church. In September of 2013, we decided to go back in order to move forward. And one of the things that we did was we went from two services to one service, hoping to gain better participation in our worship, in our teaching moments, and in other activities that are offered here at our church. Now, while one-fourth of our congregation takes advantage of the ministry resources, there is three-fourth of the ministry who still refuses to become a disciple of Christ, who fail to understand the biblical mandate to grow and mature in the area of faithfulness and commitment to Christ. In our attempt to get all of the membership plugged into ministry by actively becoming engaged with some ministry, we still find that the number of those who are not far outweigh those who are. We have sought to try to help persons identify their spiritual gifts, and still many of you don't know what your spiritual gifts are. Let me pause here again and let me say thank you to every person who serves here in ministry in some capacity. The truth of the matter is you have helped to keep our ministry 
stable. I only wish we could just see how much more effective we could be with everyone putting their hands to the gospel plow. Th those of you who continue to be diligent in various areas of the church in ministry are like blood cells. You help the body form immunity against diseases. You, you have helped to build up antibodies necessary for keeping the body on guard and are able to neutralize the work of the enemy. Let me thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking seriously the mandate in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, by rendering your bodies living sacrifices as you try to do your best not to be conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you. I've implemented Get Your Serve On series, and I began preaching on a number of Sundays for, from the idea of showing people the need for being committed to the call that God has called you to for the cause of of the kingdom with the intent of knowing it's going to cost you. In 2014, we will pause every quarter, every quarter, so that we, in fact, can recognize persons who have taken on the challenge that was given to you during the Get Your Serve On series, taken on that challenge to get plugged into ministry. We will pause every quarter to recognize persons who in fact decide and become a part of a ministry of this church. I, you know, I'm really trying to create in here a body of believers who worship, who study, who serve, and those who evangelize in order that we might see the manifold blessings and benefits that we could receive by just being plugged into what God's called us to. It's my desire to create here a body of believers who come with the desire to express gratitude without form or fashion. I want to create an army of believers who will, if necessary, wage an all-out war against anything that tries to weaken the body called Carolina Church. Y'all, as an act which in itself forms immunity for the body, I want our ministry to have sufficient spiritual defense Fences in order to avoid infection and disease by erroneous or unchristian invasion of attitudes that have been sent by the devil to shut down the function of our immune system. <laughs> you know, however, however, comparatively speaking, those of you who helped to prevent disease from spreading in the body called Carolina represent only a minority of the total membership. May I talk to you? Let's, let's just assess where we are without the fluff. You know, overall, I'm sorry to report that those who are helping to prevent disease from spreading in the body represents only a minority of the total membership. See, overall, these warriors only account for a marginal, minuscule number of members who take advantage of the provided spiritual opportunities to grow stronger in the Lord. Our general membership, as of January 2014, is now 518 active persons. 
518. Y'all, in, in, in the course of last year, in 2013, there were 86 persons who responded to the call to discipleship. Ah. I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful to God continually, grateful to God for continually seeking to add to the church daily those who believe. 86 persons walked down these aisles and surrendered their lives to Christ, and that's the best y'all can do. saddened to announce today that our leader who has been very instrumental in helping to make our decision counselors and help people to make decisions in the person of Alana Grillier who in fact will be leaving our ministry. As a matter of fact, this is her last Sunday here. She will be joining a ministry in Virginia and I want you to help me Thank her for what she's been able to do with our decision counselors. Thank you. Yes, you. I'm convinced that more of us need to take advantage of the church's spiritual growth opportunities so that we can ensure strong leadership in the church. I'm grateful to have sitting before me today our leadership. Thankful for you for leading in difficult times. Why don't you help me honor our leadership today? The sign of a healthy church is assured in the spiritual health of its leaders. That's, that's what helps us. The sign of a healthy church is assured in the spiritual health of its leaders. Spiritual leaders do not just become spiritual because they attend church or because of tenure, or because of membership. It takes sowing. It takes reaping. It takes seeking. Not status or recognition. It takes being led and Holy Spirit filled. Being a spiritual leader is not about being a keeper of the aquarium, but about being fishers of men. Spiritual leaders must avail themselves of the divinely prescribed medication necessary for developing the right spirit. And this, my brothers and sisters, is more than aspirin or anison or Tylenol because this medicine is far more than aches and for soreness and for headaches. But the regimen is what you take in order to get the anointing needed for you to be available for service. You've got to get the proper spiritual nutrients and exercise by taking at least the minimum daily dosage of devotion. You've got to get the minimum uh, daily dosage of power to share the word and express the wisdom of God in worship and in witness. Uh, listen, additionally, y'all, leaders and members of the congregation should be attending Bible study to help them become stronger spiritually. There are some who take their medicine daily 
and the evidence is shown in their strength and the wholeness found in their lives. This wellness is manifested in positive attitudes such as love, compassion, helpfulness, grace, mercy, injustice, and peace. Their willingness to be a part of the team and their cheerful desire to serve wherever and whenever needed. Lord, deliver us from leaders who want to be served and seen. Members who regularly take their medicine have found a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. The, these individuals, uh, these individual cells show forth good fruit and bear fruit to the ministry. Y'all, people who are taking their daily dose of spiritual food and nutrients are literally persons who are productive, progressive, and practical, and their methods are competent, constructive, effective, and efficient. But on the other hand, there are those who have filled themselves with spiritual junk food. And consequently, you're not bearing good fruit, but you, be, you are appearing to be wasting fruit. You're drying up on the vine. You are improper and critical with your attitudes. Your habits are destructive. You're complaining, you are, you are ch chastening, you are condemning, and you're scolding others when really it's about you. In your negativity, you create more confusion and suspicion than confidence and hope in the direction of the ministry. You know, these members do not take their daily spiritual supplements from the word of God. In fact, the only time that they reach for the prescription is when a crisis strike or a fever has flawed your faith or inflammation has nullified their inspiration to a point where they can't feel or find anything to hold on to. It's only then that you seek to run to your medicine cabinet only to discover that the prescription that you're reaching for has expired and the potency of the pill has no longer there in the medicine. It's no longer plausible. So overall, in a spiritual health assessment, y'all, Carolina, we are in a serious but stable condition. Because there are those of us who only reach for our spiritual nutrients when crisis hits us. There only there are those of us who only who only reach for our spiritual food only when we can't figure out how to make some stuff work on our own. We need improvements definitely in the area of spirituality. I will not lie to you, but I'll tell you the truth, and I'll tell it to you in love. Yo, we need improvements, definitely in the areas of discipleship, in the areas of giving, in the area of service, in the areas of evangelism, and in the area of fellowship. Oh, my Lord. Y'all, we are something when it comes to us getting directions from somebody. I, I, I watch how you all walk in on Sunday mornings and the ushers are so diligent in trying to get you to be seated in a particular area because they've already been given their assignment. And you all still, in your own arrogance and conceit, have the audacious audacity to say to the ushers, I ain't sitting there, I don't want to sit there, I'm sitting somewhere else. I'm telling you, y'all, you know, where what why is it you can't follow simple directions? 
I mean, y'all listen, y'all listen, let me, let me help y'all, listen, let me help y'all, because I want you to tweet this. Y'all, we know how to jump and shout and get our groove on in worship. But what we're lacking, you all, is discipline. What we're lacking, you all, is discipleship. What we are lacking is our ability to give and to give and to do service without having to have our name called or patted on the back or someone pull you to get you to ask you, would you please help us out because the church is going down. Our spiritual health begins with us. Ah, man, look at you. I can tell you ain't liking this, but I didn't come to be liked today. I came to help you. Because <laughs> I don't want you walking around here with an exaggerated sense of who you think you are. Because many of us believe that we're all right. And I want to be the first to tell you before you die and go wherever you're going. I want to tell you, no, we're not all right. Our condition is serious, but we are stable. Spiritual health begins with us. Would you, would you, would you take, tell your neighbor, it begins with us. Yeah, when we take our roles and responsibilities seriously and are willing to become positive examples, you need more fruit-bearing members who are willing to help others produce and bear fruits themselves. We, we need more people who will gladly receive a steady diet of the word, including a daily dose of anointing and spiritual meat that will make them hold healthy and sound. Y'all, we need a full dose of his word. We need a full dose of his spiritual meat. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to anoint us. We, we need more people who are willing to follow the advice of our divine doctor, Jesus Christ. The physician who's always on duty. Yo, if we, had, if we had members who followed the doctor's advice and took their prescription, we would not get caught up in spiritual maladies and, and illnesses. Yo, yo, until we follow the meticulous advice found in the word, we will find ourselves doing the same thing, getting nowhere. I, I need you to take your medicine. So that you do not undermine the health of the body Amen. called Carolina. Amen. Allow me if you don't mind, Sister Tracy. I, I, let, me, let me talk about um, relationally. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to talk about how we, how we handle the folk we sit next to. Amen. How we handle the people we work with. You know, a mark of a healthy body is that all of its parts are working together in unity and harmony. Y'all, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, just go there if you will, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it declares this, that the body is a unit, and though it's made up of many parts, all of the parts form one body. Just as we must have the confidence to assess ourselves spiritually, we must also have the conviction to agree. Yo, a healthy church is not just about having a working immune system, but also about all of the systems working together to prevent the body from being ravaged by disease. So y'all, the entire body works together in harmony to keep a strong constitution. Y'all, just as the organs of the human body must work to support one another, so it is, y'all, with the body called Carolina. Sometimes, y'all, parts of the body malfunctions or breaks down and collapse. 
And when they do, we need to have those parts replaced in order for the body to remain strong. Hear me, Kelly. Watch this, y'all. The body will break down, break off, break out, break up, and break away. So what it needs is a breakthrough. In this instance, y'all, an organ transplant is necessary when an organ is not doing its job. It causes a threat to the entire health of the body and therefore must be removed and replaced. When an organ is damaged, it affects the agreement principle and the relationship is blown out of balance, allowing disharmony to set in. And whenever disharmony sets in the church, it creates confusion. And wherever confusion is, God is not there. Because God says, I am a God who does things decently and in what? Yeah, one of the best one of the best conditions of a healthy body is a healthy heart. Oh, the heart is a symbol of service. Yo, listen, listen to me. Hear me, Carolina. You must have a heart to love. A heart of compassion. You've got to have a heart to forgive. Y'all please listen to me. You've got to have a heart to become generous. You have to have a heart to be obedient and understanding that y'all that 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 you can be y'all y'all with you you can have all of these things. But without a heart it means absolutely nothing. Got to have a heart, a heart to love. A heart of compassion. Forgiveness, generosity, obedience, and understanding that has sympathy and empathy for others and is willing to help and not hurt people. You've got to be willing to help and not hurt folk. Yo, there is no place for deceitfulness and manipulation in the body. Woo, preach, Pastor. I'm trying my best to keep from preaching, but I feel something happening to me because, y'all, we've got people in God's house who want to be deceitful and manipulate people. Y'all, and the heart represents the service in the body. You can't tell me you have a heart for God, and yet you manipulate me. You can't tell me you love God, and yet be deceitful to me. <sighs> Yo, the heart believes in the value of everyone who lives and thrives on the love of God. You've got to have a love for all people. I, I don't understand folk who are trying to serve in ministry and you don't have a love for the people. No way you can preach. There's no way I can pastor you and not have a love for the people. Yeah. We need to uplift each other in Christ. Amen. We need to come to a place where we can cry, right. laugh, <laughs> love each other, uplift each other. Oh, God. Yo, we... We, we, we ought to come to a place where we can work together, worship together, praise God together. We're serious, but we're stable. I got some, some illnesses. That are plaguing us. But we've got to do something to get rid of the disease. Hmm. I talked about spiritually, I talked about relationally. Let me now talk about financially. Yo, 
there are members, Angela, who know God will make a way. Come on, talk to me. I'm, 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 in the, I'm in the midst of some people who know that God will make a way. I got some tested and tried folk in the congregation who know God will make a way. Make a way. Y'all, there, there are those of you who, who operate from the principle of knowing God will make a way. There are those of you who I speak to today who operate from the principle of the tithe. You, you have tithe from your social security. You have tithe from your unemployment benefits. I'm talking to people who have tithe from other forms of assistance which have been blessed by God as a result of you doing what God called you to do. I, I, I'm talking to some folk who y'all tithe y'all from their income. You're not unemployed. You don't get social security, nor do you get any other form of assistance, but you have the strength in your body to work and to bring home a check. Y'all, and I'm saying to you that I got some folk up in here who understand that in the midst of them working, in the midst of them getting paid, they understand that everything they have has come from God. Ah, oh, there are those of you who've been faithful in your giving of the time, talents, and your treasure, which is the only way we've been able to raise in this ministry $1,188,567, y'all. That was our, we, we were able to raise a million dollars. Every cent that is given is important to the kingdom of God and we are grateful to each individual for the sacrifices of your monetary gift. Just as agreement brings accomplishments, actions brings harvest and fruitfulness. Oh, I just dropped a bombshell on you. But conversely, there has been Y'all, an unhealthy attitude which is spreading throughout the body like a malignant cancer. Sadly, you all, we've become like the children of Israel who were blessed by God to be led out of bondage and oppression and have their every material need taken care of. Their greater possession was their spirit of rebellion, though. Are you hearing me? Y'all, yes. their greatest possession was their spirit of rebellion. God had provided for every one of them. He had provided for every one of the children of Israel. Their every need was met. All they had to do was just march to the promised land. And even going to the promised land, he had prepared homes for them that they had not built. Listen, y'all, but all they had was the spirit of rebellion. Wow. That's all they had. The disease called rebellion was all they had. Y'all, this disease called rebellion can be used by the enemy to literally hinder the advancement of the kingdom. Y'all, it, it, it can be like, y'all, um, um, a, a curse, rebellion. Y'all, it, it can harden your arteries, rebellion, and cause you to be stiff-necked and rebellious. And this attitude was presented when the children of Israel rebelled against Moses, even after God had blessed them. The same attitude was present when y'all, the sons of Eli, the priests, rebelled against him. And when Saul, the first king of Israel, rebelled against God, same thing showed up again. This attitude of rebellion was present when the people rebelled against Jesus. And it's also present in the early days when Satan rebelled against God in heaven. Lost his job. As a praise leader, when God kicked him out, 
Y'all, financially, we're trying hard to make it. We're trying hard to make it. To make it. Yo, we, financially, which we're trying. Oh, it's a struggle. S some days, they don't quite know what we're going to do. Because you are just rebellious. So I ask God, I ask them, God, what do we need? <laughs> I ask us, God, what do I need to do? Fly! Stand on top of my head? What do I need to do? I've been honest, forthright, transparent. What is it you want me to do? And God said, listen, more, what, what, what they need is an injection of some antibiotics. So I asked God, I asked God, Elder Mac, I said, why? He says, because what you all have is the case of the flu. Flu, flu, God, flu. Yes. He says, you have faithless, loveless, unfulfilled people. And as a result of them being faithless and loveless and unfulfilled, they keep running. Trying to find their joy and hope in something that's going to leave them empty. Tell the people all that they have belongs to God. I've given them everything. I've given them everything. Yeah. Well, let me, let me hurry on to a close. I know you're tired. What an assessment, preacher. I've got to tell you the truth. I don't want you to walk out of here thinking that we's all right. Because we's ain't all right. <laughs> um, Pastor, are you telling me we've not accomplished anything? Allow me to give you our accomplishments, if you don't mind. Yeah. We, we went from two services to one. Somebody clap and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, we, we, we had our, we, we developed our new logo in 2013. Yeah, yeah, that's, yo, yo. We, we, we not only did we develop our new logo, but how about we launched our new website? I mean, you all, we, we, we did all kind of members development training. We held estate planning seminars. We transitioned new members class from a weekly uh, uh, Sunday class to a monthly Saturday class. And class attendance increased from an average of four persons to an average of ten. Amen. We began developing a one-year training class for the new deacons candidates. Those two new candidates for the diaconate ministry are now in training for one solid year so that they don't make the mistake that some other deacons have made and think that they are more than they are. Yeah, we have held ministry working training programs that help us know how to treat folk relationally when they walk through these doors, brought in specialists, y'all, to come and to help us to make sure that we were making folk feel like they were walking into a warm embrace. We instituted fall Bible study semester, Wednesday fasting and morning prayer. Y'all, we have done a whole lot. We held four marriages seminars to try to keep people to stay together and not break up. Oh, my Lord. We have instituted church-wide volunteer appreciation. We've launched our ministry of helps led by Veronica Harris then, who's now Tamara Adams. We have instituted an ABC committee that was led by Sherry Guest. And let me help y'all with something. Y'all, last year, Sherry Guest did her best to lead us in our ABC. Would you just help me to pause for a moment and thank her for what she was able to do? 
I have asked that a new leadership will come forth in the person of Sister Tracy, uh, who will come now and literally give leadership to this particular ministry to help us to accomplish our ABC goals. I got to tell you all this. In last year, we were trying to raise $150,000 because the state had given us some matching funds. They said to me, Pastor, if you, if you, if you seek to build, if you seek to build, if you're going to build, we'll give you $150,000, but you've got to match those funds. I came back and told you all, and we started trying to raise it through our ABC. We got to the point where we only raised in our ABC $67,000. But can I give you all the good news about that? When I went back to the council and say to them, y'all, we did not, we didn't make it. We, didn't, we couldn't make it. We didn't make it. We didn't make it. We only got this amount. The council said, we'll give you all another year to come up with the balance of the money so that you can get the whole $150,000. Y'all, that's the favor of God. We revamped and restarted our youth dance ministry led by Tashia Galloway. We revamped our 21-day fast procedures and protocol, which was led by Minister Talia Salters. Thank you, Talia, for how you helped us. While I'm there, let me just thank Minister Flowers for how you have helped to make sure that every member knows that they count and that they are important, even if they are not present in worship. We launched our Servanthood Center. Well, let me just tell y'all who we hired. We got rid of some folk, but we also hired some new people. Y'all, we hired May Reed as our youth minister, and my God, is she not something? I'm grateful to be telling you that we are part of a ministry that hired two summer interns. One college student was a CNBC member and one high school student from the community. This was funded by the congregation. We brought back Jarrell Robinson as our Minister of Worship and Fine Arts. We hired an audio consulting firm so we can make sure the sound, I want to make sure you can hear me. J Street Productions, thank you, Tevin, for being in the booth and helping us out there. I, we, uh, we hired Raphael on the drums. And my God, can that boy beat them drums? We hired Patrick, y'all, on the bass guitar didn't even know the bass was that important. We hired two fire praise worship leaders. Y'all, Elise Lewis and James Murphy. Are y'all hearing what I said? Y'all, we made some accomplishments. We were managed to do some stuff, but let me help you, y'all. If I had everybody doing their part, we could do a whole lot more. I said we can do a whole lot more. We could do a whole lot more. Y'all, if we continue to take our spiritual medicine and follow the advice of Jesus, our personal physician, we could grow even stronger. If we had the confidence to assess the convictions to agree and the courage to act, we would become a stronger church. Good health should never be taken for granted. We should all pull God, but we should all put God first and be obedient to his will and to his word. Y'all, y'all, here's my advice and here's how I want to close. Y'all, just take the medicine. Amen. Kelly, I'm going to put it like this. Y'all, just take the medicine and don't worry about the side effects. <laughs> yeah, yo, it might make you praise him, but that's all right. It might make you dance, but that's okay. It might make you shout, but even that's okay. It might make you speak in tongues, but that's all right. It might give you new power and make you teach. It might make you get up and jump over pews or run around this church. But those are the side effects. Are you hearing me? But just take the medicine. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, listen, y'all. We can grow stronger in our love because God's building a stronger body here at Carolina. We will not be weak. Are you hearing me? I'm not a weak leader. Therefore, I cannot produce weak people. Y'all, listen, as we heal, our love for the Bible and the Word ought to grow. We will develop stronger unity of spirit and the bond of peace and be able to operate in our gifts and make sure that our ministry is not retarded, but that we operate effectively. Tell somebody we can do it. Yeah, we, we can be committed. We can be committed to obeying God no matter what the outcome seems to be. You ought to be loyal to your church. Loyal to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Loyal to your man and woman of God. Y'all, we've got to respect the leadership and the officers who have been assigned to this ministry. Oh, y'all, we've got to increase in our finances Increase not only in our finances, but also in our witness to our neighbors led by the Holy. We've got to be better relationally and certainly better spiritually. Yo, take the doctor's advice. So instead of saying it's impossible, you ought to say all things are possible if we just believe. Instead of saying, I'm too tired, you ought to say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. Instead of saying, nobody loves me, y'all, we ought to all be saying, Jesus loves me. This I know. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Instead of saying, I can't go on, you ought to be saying, his grace is sufficient. Y'all, instead of you saying, I can't figure it out, you ought to be saying, God's going to work it out. And God will direct our steps. Instead of saying, I can't do it, you ought to say, we can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens us. Instead of you saying, it's not working. Y'all, you ought to be saying all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Instead of you saying, I can't forgive myself. Then you ought to be saying, Jesus loves me and he forgives me. Instead of you saying, I can't manage, you ought to be saying, God will supply all of my needs. Instead of saying, I'm afraid, you ought to be saying, I have not seen, ear have not heard what God's going to do. Instead of saying, I am worried, oh, you ought to be saying, I cast my cares upon him because he cares for me. Instead of saying, I don't have enough faith, you ought to be saying, I have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Oh, God, y'all. Instead of saying, I'm alone. You ought, to, you ought to say, he walks with me, talks with me, guides my footsteps every day. Y'all, we can make a way. Let, let, me, let me close like this, y'all. I'm finished. Thank you. Be seated for just a moment. Y'all, listen, listen. Pastor, where are we going? Y'all, here's where we're going. We're going to outflow. Do me a favor, y'all. Lean over and tell somebody we're going to outflow. That, that's where we're going. We're going where? Outflow. To outflow. See, y'all, society says, look out for yourself. But God says, look out for others, and I'll look out for you. Amen. I can't get no help here. Amen. Y'all, we're going to outflow. In other words, y'all, we're going to stop looking out for us and literally start looking out for others. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So this becomes the year of outflow. It becomes the year of what? The year of outflow. I have asked one of our members, Monique Taylor, 
to help me and First Lady develop our events for the entire year of Outflow. So, y'all, I've asked her to come together. I said, hey, here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that we, during the course of this year, will have at least every quarter an event where our congregation as a whole will converge on some nonprofit organization or some other organization who's seeking to try to help people and they don't have enough resources. I want us to come out of our comfortable homes, get out of our fine cars, and put on a t-shirt that simply says, Outflow, I live to give. And we march our happy hips over to somewhere else who needs some help. And we help other folk out to make their life a little more better. I said, Monique, I got to have four organizations that our church will work with in conjunction with our political people. I want our senator to be involved, our council person to be involved, our civic associations to be involved. And Carolina Church is going to march their way wherever they need us to help somebody else for four y'all times during the year. I ain't through yet. I, I said to her, in September, between September and October, I need a coat drive. I said, between September and October, I need us to go buy coats. Uh, a coat drive. C-O-A-T. Can somebody tell me why? <laughs> oh, forget it, I'll tell you. Because it's getting cold then. And folk need coats. Children need some coats on their backs. I hear the Bible saying, I came unto you. <laughs> I was naked. <laughs> and you gave me clothes. <laughs> When did I give you clothes? And I hear the Lord saying, y'all, if you've done it unto the least of these, then you've done it unto me. But then I asked, I said, you know what else I want to do? I want a toy drive. So from October to December, I need us to collect toys that's going to be distributed to every child whose daddy is in jail, mama incarcerated, or don't have any, any parents at all to get anything from. Or whose parents don't have resources to even get their children anything. We're going to have a toy, y'all. We're going to make this Toys R Us. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> all right, Pastor, how we going to distribute them? I'm glad you asked me. Because I love it when y'all ask me the right questions. On Christmas Eve, what day did I say? Y'all, we're going to come together as a collective church body and we're going to host a great big old community dinner for every person, for every family that's homeless or who doesn't have food to eat and no toys to give. And we're going to be up in here serving them. We're going to be serving them and then giving them toys because this is the year of outflow outflow is the year of what it's the year of what it's the year of outflow i'm finished i'm finished come on stand with me let's go you should you missed your chance to stand you should have been standing it's the year of what so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take four times out of the year to converge on to some organization to help them out. We're going to take September and October and we're going to buy coats. If you can buy Coke 45. <laughs> if you can buy Miller's. If you can, if you can buy you some weed. If you can make it rain, then I want you to help me make it rain over here. 
to help somebody else who's less fortunate. Come on, hold it, hold it, hold it. If you can stand in the lottery line, if you can go to live casino, if you can go, yo, your live casino is in Anne Arundel County. Uh, what's the one close? What's the other one in Delaware? What's the one in Delaware? I know you knew it. I knew you knew it. I just want to see if you knew it. Yo, if, you, if you can go there, if you can send roses to the other woman, if you can buy candy for someone who ain't your boo, then I want you to come here and let me help you spend God's money on some place that's going to make a difference in the life of somebody else. Hey, baby, baby, my bow tie straight, my bow tie straight. Okay. Just want to make sure I didn't want to get it crooked. Yo, it's, it's important for us to understand that God didn't bless us to keep it all to ourselves. No. He blessed us so that we could bless somebody else. I had to go to this church to preach. I know you're standing. Everybody ought to be standing. We're ready to go. I had to go to this church last week to preach. And um, Mustafa, I was there, man. And I preached. I wish y'all had been there. And I talked about, uh, they had some theme talking about take it back by force. And I said to them, listen, some stuff you ain't got to take back by force. No. All you got to do is change your perspective. You hear me, Deacon Gregory? That's all you got to do is change your perspective. Change it. Everybody remembers the story of Job. Job, you know, wealthy man, loved God, lost everything. Lost his children, wife got crazy. Friends, he lost his friends. But then the Bible says in the last chapter that Job got it all back ten times. Josh, here's how Job got it back. It wasn't that he went into the camp. Tay, he didn't just take it back by force. That's not what happened to Job. Job got it back when he changed his perspective on his friends. Because Job was upset with his friends. You see, his friends kept saying to him, man, you didn't sin somewhere. You need to go ahead and just go ahead and just confess. You know you're wrong. Go ahead and do it. Curse God and die. I mean, y'all, his friends were y'all turning on him. Not to mention his own wife. But the Bible says the moment that he started praying for his friends who had become his enemies, his whole circumstance changed. So I got through preaching and I sat down. And God said to me, I want to tell you something else. I said, God, why are you? I done spoke for you for the last 40 minutes. He said, Lean over and ask the preacher, how much is your mortgage payment? I, I leaned over. I said, Hey, preacher. Listen, man, how much is your mortgage? They had just bought this new building, bought a building. They had been renting a building. They just bought this. So I asked, I said, how much is your mortgage, man? How much is your mortgage? And he said to me, Pastor, our mortgage is $4,000. I said, thank you. I said, can I, can I have the mic now? Can I, can I say something? He said, sure. I walked back up to the microphone, and I told the people, I said, listen, I want everybody who's a member of this church, this ain't for you but I want to talk to the members of Carolina. I told them what the Lord just had spoke to me, had asked me, to ask the man how much was his mortgage. I said, the Lord told me that we're going to raise their first month's mortgage right now. $4,000. And they were like, y'all, their mouths dropped. Pastor, 
It's only about 50, 70 of us in here. We gonna do 4,000? Yes. Guess what, y'all? We took up the offering. When we got through, we gave them, without their people participating, $4,000. I want to come up close and be in person with you. I just want somebody to ask me why. I love it when y'all ask me the right questions, Darlene. I love it. I love it. Here's why. Here's why. Do you not know that the only reason why we are in this building is because somebody came alongside of us and paid our mortgage for months. Oh, man. For months, somebody else paid our mortgage so we could have a building. And I heard God say, I know you ain't got much, but the way to get more is to follow me and be obedient to my word. And when I speak to you, let it go and watch me open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. This is the year of outflow. This is the year where I give back Rather than taking from people, I sold my life. Listen, y'all. Elders, I'm ready, y'all. Come on, line up for me. Listen, listen, preachers, deacons, listen. Y'all, I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not lie to you. I'm not going to try to pull the wool over your eyes and make you believe that we're okay. Y'all, we got room for improvement. I'm grateful to God for stability. He's given us favor. But Russell, what I need, man, is I need brothers like you, brothers like these other men up here who will square their shoulders and say something like this. As for me and my house. Brother Wren, that's what I need, man. Brothers who will square their shoulders and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I need, I need, I need an army of people who know how to trust the heart of their leader and who knows that your leader ain't some fly-by-night preacher trying to swindle you out of something. I'm trying to give to you. Ralph, I need some brothers who won't rob God but to give God what rightfully belongs to him. I need some sisters who will stop tipping God and give God the tithe that belongs to him. Aren't you tired of having your stuff be shut down? Every time you turn around, you try something new. This ain't working. You try this, that ain't working. Y'all, and you keep ignoring the clarion call of God knocking on your door. Firstly, all I'm doing, all I'm doing is sounding the trumpet. I'm blowing my trumpet, y'all. I'm blowing my trumpet. Y'all, every day I walk up in here and I stand behind this desk, all I'm doing is blowing my trumpet. I'm trying to get y'all to see that God wants you, that God needs you. This church could be so much further along with people if they wasn't just spectators. Now, 
Now, you might be visiting with us today. Listen, I'm sorry. But what you see is what you get. Just how I roll. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. But I'm going to give you the truth in love. I don't want you to walk out of here believing that you just was in a great, oh, I was in a grand church. Let me help you. We just like any other church. The church around the corner is just as messed up as we are. They just bigger than we are, so they're bigger. They got a bigger mess than we have. And listen, I want to extend an invitation. I don't know who you are today, whoever you are. Pastor, you know what? I need to give my life to Christ. I need to come to Jesus. I love where you're going. I love what you're doing. Pastor, you're real, you're sincere. I sense it. I, I want to be a part. I want to surrender my life to Christ. I don't know who you are, wherever you might be. I want you to walk out from where you are right now and just give me your hands. And preacher, you was talking to me. You're preaching to me. I felt like I, I was sitting right there with you. Come on. I don't know who you are, but wherever you might be. Would y'all help me for just a moment? I want you to ask your neighbor just two questions for me. I want you to ask your neighbor, are you saved? Do you have a church home? I want you to wait for an answer. If they tell you, no, I'm not saved, no, I don't have a church, I want you to invite them to walk down this aisle. But don't send them by themselves, you walk with them. Come on, minister to your neighbor. Two questions. Bless your choir. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. There's power. There is power. the Lord I wait on you there is power in the name of Jesus yes it is to break every chain break every chain break every chain yeah. break every chain break every chain break every chain do you believe what he's singing you believe it? Sing, brother. There is power yeah. in, the name. in the name of Jesus. You believe it? Do you believe Come it today? There is power, there is power, power in, the in the name of Jesus. Power. There is power. Now, if you're saved and you know it and you're not ashamed, give God the best praise you can for your own salvation. God bless you. Be seated. Elders, if you all would come on. Deacons, we're ready. Let's pray. Our ushers are in the aisles with envelopes. If you need an envelope, lift your hand up wherever you are. They'll bring an envelope to you. There are hands that are up. Thank you, Sister Carol. Thank you. There are envelopes. There are hands that are up. Bless you. Now listen. They're bringing you the envelope. Look, listen. Last week... This church was running over. The tithes and the offering was about $6,700. No, that ain't good, baby. Trust me. I want you to know that ain't good. Y'all, listen. We, we can't keep lying to God. Can't keep doing that. So I need you to understand and know that every member of our ministry is being asked to make sure that you are consistently giving God what belongs to Him. Giving it to the Lord. Giving it to God. If you are visiting with us, you can use your debit card. You can write your check to CNBC. Our members know you can use your debit card to give. Whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart, 
because God was not going to tell you to do something that ain't right. So we give God the tithe. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. I want to move our condition from serious to fair and stable. And I want to keep teaching you some more so I can move it from fair to good and stable. But just so you know, whatever status we find ourselves in, there will always be room for improvement. Always room for improvement. So we're bringing God the tithe. I want you to make sure that you all are listening and bringing God the offering. Write your name legibly. Legibly and make sure that what you have on the outside is what's on the inside. Amen. I want you to stand with me all over this church. Stand with me. Stand with me all over this church. We're going to be out of here in just a few more minutes and on our way out. Thank you for your time. I don't want you to make the person on your row have to step over you to get to the offering basket so all of us are walking. Even if you have nothing to give, you're walking in faith that the next time you walk, God's going to bless you. wrestled with this, but I want to tell y'all on next Sunday one of our members who has been transporting people to church in her automobile car has just broken down with astronomical amounts of repairs that are needed. I said to our member, you know, with all that you seek to do to help others get back and forth to church, the least we can do is help you. So next Sunday, I know y'all weren't going to say nothing, that's all right. I, Because I'm going to have to preach this outflow into you. So next Sunday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the special offering. And I'm going to help this member that car to get it fixed and for her to keep on transporting people. I know I know why y'all ain't saying nothing because y'all drive by folk every day who need a ride and won't even help them. Take that gift that God's purpose in your heart to give. Lift it high as though you're not ashamed of it. Come on, lift it high. God has approved it. He's sanctioned the gift you're bringing. Father, I pray now for this gift that I bring, for the tithe that we give. Now, Lord, bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our ushers are going to lead and direct you. Come on. Just follow the direction of the ushers. Just to prove.
tell you I need you. Everybody clap your hands. Whoa, whoa. Verse two. When I'm in need, you're my provider. And oh, how you love to love me. Oh, when I am sick, you're my healer. Oh, how you love to love me. My life is in your hands. You give for me. Yeah, yeah. Just to prove my love again. And my life is in your hands. I just really want to tell you I love you. I really wanna tell you I need you. cards if you haven't got one the ushers are coming to pass them out to you now every member of our ministry ought to have one of these every member what I want you to do for me even today I want you to complete this card if you will the choir needs them this is our ABC it's our ABC cards it's our above and beyond campaign Every year, we launch Above and Beyond. Somebody says, what is that? That's how we were able to buy these 18 acres of land. It's how we got this $3.5 million building built. It's how we're going to get the next building built. Every member of our church, I have hands that are up down front. Every member of our church ought to have one of these. I need you to turn them in. Down front here on the front row, Elder Mac. Every member, the choir members need them. Every member, I have one. Every member. 
Now, if our friends would like to have one to sow, you're certainly welcome to it. Our next building is to get our sustainable housing up for single mothers who are HIV positive or have AIDS and for their children and their children. And so that's what we're working towards. That's that 150000 that we need to match from the state. Now, I want you to complete those cards. I want you to complete them. You can turn it in today or you can bring it back next Sunday. But I want you to complete it. We ask every member to give $1,000 over the course of the year. Over the course of the year. If you divide $1,000 by 52 weeks, That's about $23, $22 a week that you would give. This is good ground. This is good ground. The second thing that I want to tell you all on Monday, January the 27th, the scholarship ministry will have a meeting with all parents and students to discuss eligibility requirements as well as discuss financial aid. A representative from Friendly High School will be here to um, go over the FAFSA applications. The meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Again, it's for parents and high school students you need to plan to attend. Now, I do want to drop this on you all. What I like about our ministry, Brother Jamal, is that we are holistic in our approach. See, so I didn't ask you all to come so I can teach you about Jeremiah only. I'm asking you to come so I can show you how to get what you are entitled to so your child can go to school. And many of you all will not take advantage of the resources that this ministry has. And so I want to encourage you to do so. I want to encourage you to do so. So on January the 27th, now, in a few moments, I'm going to dismiss everybody. We're going to all be out of here. But today is our ministry fair, which simply means that every ministry of our church is on parade. Every ministry is on parade for you so that you can get plugged in somewhere so we can change our condition. So, um, Sister Bessie, would you come? Y'all help me because I'm tired. And give me some, uh, some instructions and tell the people Y'all, every ministry, every ministry. Do I have my announcement folder? Because I want to talk about the ministries that are not, I don't have leaders for yet. Good afternoon. Um, you will see that the ministries have all set up tables and their tables in the lobby, but also. Excuse me, it's still morning. I'm sorry. See, when she say afternoon, she's trying to say, Pastor, you preached a long time. <laughs> All right. They gave her her own mic, too. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that, y'all. I'm just a little tired. Um, but the ministries are set up in the lobby, but also here in the sanctuary. Um, to my right, your left, is the administration table that's going to have on it uh, for volunteers, as well as for the new ministries that Pastor's going to be talking about in a moment. The Barnabas ministry and decision counselors are to my right. To my left is intercessory prayer information technology and guest services guest services is the ministry that ministers to our special guests as well as persons who come to uh, preach here at the ministry then the other ministries are all going to be in the lobby please stop by the tables get information if you're not currently serving in a ministry please sign up for one 
And if you're already serving in a ministry, but there is one that you like, also sign up for those ministries. The ministry leaders have taken their time to decorate their tables. Some of them are, um, they have all kinds of things for you. Some have little gifts for you, but don't just stop by the table to pick up the gift. Stop by the table to get the information. All right? Thank you all so much. God bless you. I want you all to know that, um, I'm going to use this one here. Got you. All right. May, come here, precious. This is Minister May. Y'all give her a hand as she comes. <laughs> Minister May is doing her best to develop our young people. And um, in doing so, she, in fact, needs our assistance. We want to send our children, but nobody wants to help out. And she needs our help. I've got persons who are sitting up here with the ability to teach. Now, I, I got to warn you. I, I need to just put it out there and tell you that um, if you can't get by a security clearance, then you want to hold up. Well, I, just, I just want to tell you straight up. Because we take very serious the hands in which we placed our children. That's right. Come on, applaud yourselves for that. We take that very serious. And so we won't just put our children in anybody's hands. Those persons that you see working with our children have gone through security clearances to be certain that they can be around our children. Amen? And so we, I want you all to listen. I don't want to beg in 14 like I did in 13, and like I did in 12, 11, 10, 9. No, I need you to just say, you know what, whatever it takes, Pastor, I'm going to help out and be consistent in your helping out. Now, not only with, with the youth ministry, but um, let me tell y'all, I want to see um, developed here. This is the administrative table. Is that the one with that good looking guy on it? No? Oh. Oh. That's Barnabas table. I don't know who that guy is, but y'all need to go over and see that. To go. That's Idris Elba kind of stuff over there. So just... Just drop on by without the accent. Hey. I don't know why y'all laughing. I don't know what's funny. <laughs> so, so, thank you. I heard an amen back here. Thank you. So, y'all need to go. The, on the administrative table. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, thank you. On the administrative table, there are some ministries I want to see developed in this, in this church. One is the crochet ministry. Um, Robin. Stand up. Where Robin? She gone? She went upstairs. Robin, Robin is, um, she's something, y'all. She messed up. But she knits and crochets. And I saw her doing it. And she said, Pastor, you know, there are many persons in our church who do it. So I challenged her. I said, I wonder if you all could crochet blankets for people who are homeless. But then stitch it in prayer. That every time you stitch it, you praying, Lord make them productive and then we give them away and so I ask for the ministry to be developed on that I also ask for a dance ministry to be developed for adults our praise dances we have one with our children and um, they're going to be coming forth um, the last Sunday in February they're going to be coming forth on the last Sunday in February I wanted the ministry for, for entrepreneurs and um, Sister Elise, where's Sister Elise? Elise, she sent me a proposal. I said to her, you write it up and we'll make it happen. And it's for people who have their own businesses but need an outlet and a network system and a way to seek to keep together and keep the best practices and principles and policies that are godly in their business. And so thank you, Elise, for taking on that responsibility. I also ask for an excellent team ministry.
those who would assist First Lady and I with various projects that are coming up. I ask you all to do that. I wanted to develop a fitness ministry. And one of the things under the fitness is I wanted a hand dance class, a hand dance class, so we could learn how to hand dance and exercise at the same time. They then said to me, Pastor, if we do that, we got to do a line dance. I told them I didn't care how they got the exercise in as long as they were exercising. Y'all can line dance, hand dance, as long as we can get it in. Amen? Amen. Scholarship ministry, a singles ministry. Um, I asked for this, y'all, and this is the last three in the real dear to my heart, is I wanted a support group started um, for persons who are dealing with cancer, cancer support group. And I wanted it to consist of persons who are survivors of cancer and um, those who have lost loved ones and who have battled this. I want, I want persons to come together as a support group and seek to help. I also wanted a grief support group because most folk think that when people die, we just supposed to bounce back and um, it don't impact us and we don't have any grief. If you don't deal with grief properly, it will take you out of here. And so I want to be certain that we, in fact, are seeking to minister to people where they are. And the last one that I have here in the support group is a group that deals with persons who are dealing with people in their family with Alzheimer's. And um, whether you all know it or not, that's a serious thing and it's draining. And so I wanted a support group and finally a tutoring ministry to help us in this area. So I want to ask you all, y'all, and all of those ministries I've just outlined, are you can sign up on the administrative table if you're interested in any one of them. But I need you to go to a ministry table and get plugged in. That's what I need. That's why I've been preaching the way I've been preaching. It's because I want you to get plugged in. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, the other one is sports ministry. They wanted me, the young people said, Pastor, we want a sports ministry. And I said, if that's what y'all want, then that's what we're going to do. Uh, I got people who are coaches in here and folk who have the ability to make it happen. There are Christian leagues that our children and our uh, teams could be a part of. They wanted an adult softball team, an adult softball team. And, um, and um, where, my, where my friend? Cheryl, where's Cheryl? Cheryl, where are you? Stand up, Cheryl. Stand up, girl. That will happen when I get to know your name. Cheryl is, um, she's so interested in this and, and getting folk on a softball team and getting sports organized within our church until I wanted it to happen. I wanted it to happen. I want to support her. And so even that you can sign up for on the administrative table. Thank you, Cheryl Underwood, for being so kind. That's what happens when pastor knows your name. All right, let's go home, y'all. Thank you so much for your time. I got, um, those are the visitor's cards. No. Oh. Say it again. Good. Okay, great. Um, give me two, uh, two.